of our air or atmosphere whatever you want to call it down here on earth where we would be is the the troposphere the tropo layer then the strato layer meso layer and then the thermo layer and as you can see thermo is cold so i call that the ice area and fire is hot so that's where the uh, uh the fire would be but you know, you would think at first that the me that the moon would be in the meso layer, and that's that's what I thought. But I think they're both up here, and uh, that's based on a, uh, a video I just watched again, actually, uh, from a, a, an amateur rocket launch, uh, a go fast rocket that was launched in, in 2014. When you watch that video, the rocket takes off, cameras pointing down. For some reason, cameras are always pointing down and never up, which would be nice if we could see what's going on when they're going up. But anyway. Camera's pointing down, rocket takes off, and pretty quickly the rocket starts spinning around like crazy. I mean, you can see the fins and you can see the ground spinning. It might make you dizzy if uh, if uh, you stare at it too long. So the rocket's spinning as it's, as it's traveling up. And about one minute into the flight, it suddenly just stops. Rocket just stops. And that, that spinning stops, everything just stops. And it just kind of sits there for a second. Yeah, copy. Uh, we are not getting uh, telemetry from that last song. Please stand by. And some people have suggested that it hit a dome that may be above us, but I thought at that velocity it would have been destroyed. So I didn't think much of it when I originally watched it, but I have to thank a guy named Jeff who just sent it to me again because it really put some pieces together for what I was working on with this. And uh, when, you, when you watch the video, the rocket just stops. And so I started looking up the stats. This thing, that rocket, went over 3,500 miles per hour on that trip. Now, it might not have been going that fast when it stopped, but it was going a few thousand miles per hour at least, and it just, all that energy just suddenly, where did it go? Rockets don't have brakes. It's, it literally stops, and I mean, the, the rotation uh, keeps going a little bit, but all of that angular momentum from the, from the rotation of the rocket and the linear momentum from flying up just stopped? No, it had to have hit something.
But what if it hit? If it hit a solid surface, the rocket would have been destroyed, and most likely the camera too, so we wouldn't have the footage, and obviously that's not the case. So when you start watching it, around that time, around a minute in, the uh, a few seconds later, the, the two stages separate, this two-stage rocket looks like, and you watch the bottom half of the rocket start to fall down, as you would expect. But then then the upper half, the, cam the way the camera's mounted to it, starts spinning around, and very slowly it starts to go fall back towards Earth. Very slowly. And you might think, well, you know, it's got, I have it up here, the Go Fast rocket got up to about 117 kilometers. And space, outer space, is considered in the thermolayer. Once you cross into the thermolayers, technically you're in outer space. But what doesn't make sense is just because you, you fly vertically into outer space doesn't mean that you're just going to float there. That's not how it works based on the heliocentric model. If you watch Balls Out, Balls Out Physics Episode 3, I talked about how there's you have to have an orbital velocity, and, and these orbital velocities are incredibly fast. You have to be orbiting the Earth to resist the force pulling down on you, gravity, weight, whatever you want to call it, that pulls down on you. You have to do that. You have to do, basically, this string is gravity, just to show this again if you haven't seen that. You have to go, you have to be moving at a high velocity to resist that force. That rocket went straight up, so it should have fallen straight back down. Now just to, to see what the acceleration on that rocket should be, assuming you know, very thin, almost no air up here, because that's what's supposed to be there, I did a calculation at 117 kilometers plus the radius of the Earth, and I found that the acceleration towards Earth, due to gravity if you want to call it that, or due to weight, should be roughly 9.46 meters per second squared. That's not much... <laughs> that rate is pretty close to the rate at sea level, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So it should have basically done this, but it didn't. It stops and then it just kind of slowly starts sinking, like it's in water or some type of liquid. That's what it looks like. If you really start watching it, the way those pieces are falling, if you get to about 2 minutes and 10 seconds in, you see the other stage the, the lower half of the rocket is still slowly tumbling down like it's in water. According to uh, according to mainstream science, as you get up in these these layers, as the temperature goes up, as you go get up in these layers, the pressure decreases. The pressure becomes almost nothing in the thermo layer and meso layer as well. But suddenly, it just kind of stops and then slowly starts sinking. What's going on here? Is there water there? Or some kind of liquid? Or some kind of very, very dense gas? Scriptures tell us that there is water up there. Hmm, that's interesting. So the rocket just stops. Okay. Well, then there's the lunar wave that Crow 7 and 7 filmed in 2012. So watch the lower left there, and I'm just going to run a straight slowed down view, 30%. If you've got sharp eyes, you'll see what we detected on a 60-inch monitor. Now look inside the circle. 
there's a pulse that goes from lower left to upper right, and in the next circle, the yellow one, there's a lateral sweep that goes from left to right straight across the screen. And this is all going on as the wave is starting at the bottom. So now look at the pulses backwards and forwards. That's backwards. This is forwards coming from the lower left limb of the moon. You can see the pulses now that I've put filters on them, how they have a curved aspect to them. And if you've got sharp eyes, you'll see the sweep up above. Now what I'm going to show you now, we have talked about, and many sharp-eyed viewers have known that this was an important thing about this clip for a long time. Here comes the wave. Look at the dark underlined crater in the center of your screen. Watch how it's displaced, almost like you're looking through water. There goes the wave backwards, forwards, the wave hits the crater, displaces. This wave is displacing, as if you are looking through water, the entire image of the moon. Now, I've never taken the time to animate this. I have talked about it. There it is zoomed in. Now, this is running at 30%, and I'm going to zoom out. There goes the wave to the top, and there's going to be another wave coming in from the bottom. Now, I'm going to run this at 30%, so as the wave comes in, you can choose any landmark you want. Here comes the wave from the bottom to the top. Choose any little landmark you can see there, and watch it be displaced. Now, that round-looking ring crater forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and one more time forward, and I'll zoom out, and you can watch it go all the way to the top. Again, this is at 30% with quite a few filters like Find Edge and some other things, Invert. So you combine that with how this rocket behaves, and now I'm starting to think that I've seen enough evidence that I can actually write this right here. H2O. And this mesopause, as this, this area is called, where the where the temperature the temperature starts to increase as you cross into the thermo layer, I mean rapidly increases up to 500 to 1500 degrees Celsius, there appears to be some water. T-minus 90 seconds to be counted. All systems are go. For about 90 seconds, we will launch a special notice code. T-minus 60 seconds to be counted. We are transferring to the corporate of your change. Power and distal heat discovery is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for all the signals start. Here on the go for another human part. And we have a go for all the signals start. Discovery's onboard computers are finally controlled. Of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 17 seconds in the Fifteen.